Hi team, my name is Aishwan Dubey and I am pursuing full stack data science course in my Alma Beta school. This is my fourth capstone project where the project name is Netflix movies and TV shows clustering. This project is uh, based on unsupervised machine learning. I individually work on the, worked on this project. So basically this project is about the Netflix company which is the world's largest uh, the online streaming platform uh, with having the 220 millions of subscribers. The goal of this project is to classify groups and Netflix shows into clusters based on their similarity and getting the suggestions from the users. So uh, for this project, I got a data set which I have to work uh, uh, upon and that data set consists of TV shows and movies data which was of uh, as of Netflix as of year 2019. The data was collected by the Flexiable. Uh, a third party network Netflix search engine. Uh, then I did first I did the exploratory data analysis in the data set which understand uh, which uh, helps to understand the distribution of content types, analyzing the trends over time, identifying the patterns. Uh, then I did the uh, clustering on the Netflix data set, which uh, enabled the platform to offer personalized recommendation to the user, improving the user enga engagement and satisfaction. So analyzing the distributions of content types in different countries can reveal regional preferences and help uh, tailor or uh, Netflix tailor its offering offerings to the specific markets. Clustering based, which I did uh, in the two parts. One was gaming, second was, was agglomerative clustering. So clustering shows based on the text-based features such as the description on the or cast information. By the, doing the clustering, I uncover the hidden patterns and the similarities among different titles, allowing for more targeted com, uh, content recommendation and a better understanding of user preferences. So this, so this was my GitHub link. So let's um, intro, let me introduce to the you to the problem description that what was the problem description given to me that this data set consists of TV shows and movies available on Netflix as of 2019. In 2018, we released an interesting report which shows the number of TV shows on Netflix had nearly tripled since 2010. The streaming services uh, number of movies has decreased by more than 2,000 titles since 2010, while its number of TV shows is nearly tripled. It will be interesting to explore what all other insights can be obtained from the same data set. The integrating this data set with other external data sets such as IMDb ratings, Rotten Tomatoes can also provide many interesting things. So these were some attributes which were present in my data set like show ID, the unique ID for every movie and each and every movie and uh, TV show like title, title of movie or TV show, cast, the actors or the uh, crew of that data show, the country from which that uh, movie belongs to or originated, the show originated, release year, durations. So let's begin our coding part. So these were the required libraries which were required in my project. So I imported these all libraries. Then I uh, with the help of Google Collab Notebook, uh, I mounted my drive. Then uh, this was my data set, Netflix movies and TV shows clustering CSV. These are the first five rows used. I, uh, I visual, sorry, I uh, got the result from the, from, uh, from using the head method in uh, my data frame. Then these are the bottom five rows using tail method. Then this was the shape seven, seven, eight, seven, and twelve. Means I have seven thousand seven hundred eighty-seven rows or observations in my data set, and twelve columns are there. Next, the number of columns, the twelve columns, the name of those twelve columns, show ID, type, title, director, cast, country. Then I got the information that uh, my data types of each and every column. 
then i searched for the duplicate values whether any duplicate values are present in my in my data set or not so i got the result that no duplicate values are found in my data set then i handled the null values what i got to know that director has director column has maximum number of uh, null values here you can see so i thought to drop the director column other than this cast and country is also having uh, some null values so it is necessary to handle these null values properly so i changed the data type of cast and country so here you can see uh, after doing this much of coding the no null values are present in my data set so from here i am beginning my exploratory data analysis so first question was there that how much uh, movies and how much tv shows are present so i got the answer that uh, 5372 movies are there and 2398 tv shows are there let me visualize it in the plot here you can see the tv shows is nearly half of the uh, number of movies then i plotted this in the percentage also so here you can see the movie is 69.1% and the uh, tv show has 30.9%. This indicates the number of movies on Netflix is higher than the number of TV shows, highlighting a greater quantity of movies compared to the TV show content on the platform. Second question was this: Which category has the highest rating? Uh, in my data set, the, all the categories have, were having uh, some kind of uh, information like TV PG has the older kids, TV MA adults, TV Y7 older kids R is for the adults. here you can see these are the ratings tv ma r pg 113 so i plotted this one also i first uh, i created two extra columns like tv show and movie then i plotted uh, a graph between tv show means rating and count so here you can see the highest number of ratings are given to the tv ma tv ma stands for the mature tv mature audience this indicates uh, that intended for uh, this uh, indicates that content is in the intended for the adults adult audience uh, due to its, its mature themes and language of content now here you can see a plot between rating and count the highest maximum uh, number of ratings has been given to tv ma next question was uh, there that in which year maximum number of movies are released so here you can see that i counted every year with their respective number of movies and I, then i plotted a graph between the number and the years here you can see that this maroon line belongs to uh, the uh, movie and this blue line belongs to the tv shows So here you can see, nearly in 2017 to 18, I think maximum number of movies are has been produced. So this is a graph between release year count means last in last 20 years how many movies are released. Here you can see that 2017 and 18 has the maximum number of movies which are released. Then I counted again a plot uh, graph between the TV shows as well. So I got to know about that in twenty twenty, year two thousand twenty, maximum number of TV shows has been produced. Here you can see. Next, this is my data frame. So what I did here, that. Uh, here you can see the date is like november 16 second march september september means 9 march means 3 so i added one more column to it like here august month 8 december 12 november 11 january first month and uh, my next question is uh, related to month only that in which month maximum number of movies has been released So I plotted a graph between count in month. Maximum number of movies has been released between October to January. 
So this period from October to January experienced the highest influx of new movies, TV shows being added to the Netflix platform during these months. Here you can see that blue uh, blue represents the movie and brown rep represents the TV show, town and month. Next one is which genre is more popular? We have the several genres uh, in my data set like documentaries, stand-up comedy. What a result I got that documentary is more popular um, in terms of movie. Now, we, if we come to the terms of TV shows, Hits TV is popular among all these present, uh, all these categories or all these genres in presence. So, this genre specifically caters to the uh, children and offers age-appropriate content. Next question was, they are like, uh, which reason has the maximum dura uh, duration? Which, or, sorry for that, which season has the maximum duration? We have the information of CD, uh, seasons also and the durations also. So this is a normal distribution. So up, upon this distribution, I can say the duration ranging from 50 minutes to 150 minutes. This duration range suggests that the ma majority of movies available on the platform fall within a standard feature film length between 50 to 150 minutes. Now this is the show's duration. Among, we have the season numbers also in, a, in my data set, like first season, second season, fourth season, fifth season, third season, six, seven, uh, the least is eight season. So the highest number of TV shows on the Netflix consists of a single season. The reason, Maybe the this indicates that the significant portion of TV shows available on the platform that were either intended to be limited series or were discontinued after a single season. Here you can see about the ratings, a graph between rating and minutes. So according to this graph, I can say that NC-17 rating tends to have a longest duration among all the rating categories. On the other hand, TV wire rating, which is uh, intended for young children, have the shortest average time. Next question, which country has the maximum number of content on the Netflix? Based on the country type, we can uh, say that movie and the TV shows. United States has produced the maximum number of uh, content was available by the United States, followed by India. United States, the count is 3051 and for India, it is 923. Now, if we split the count in the uh, number of movies and the uh, number of TV shows, so based on the uh, based on this plot, I can say that yellow belongs to movies and black belongs to TV shows. So the thing is, uh, here you can see in all those among all those countries, India has maximum number. Of, India has produced maximum number of movies, minimum number of minimum number of TV shows, and the last is South Korea, like minimum number of uh, movies and maximum number of TV shows. So Netflix library includes a significant collection of movies, specifically targets the towards the Indian viewer. Now I'm preparing my data for the heat map. So this is a heat map plotted between uh, the target ages and country. Like India has the teens 57%. Older kids in the United States are 20%. Spain, it, uh, older kids are 4%. So this is the heat map. The target is demographics for Netflix in the US, UK closely aligned. On the other hand, Mexico and Spain have the same uh, similar content on the Netflix, but for the different age groups. Eighth question is count of Netflix original. But first thing is, first thing when we listen to this word Netflix original, what will be our con what Thing will come in my mind or come in your mind that what is Netflix original? So the Netflix original definition is that some movies and TV shows on Netflix were originally released outside of the platform 
and were later added to the Netflix library. These are not considered as the Netflix original. On the other hand, if we talk about the Netflix original, Netflix original refers to the movies or TV shows that are produced or co-produced by the Netflix itself. So I plotted a pie chart between the originals and others. So I got the information that 30.01% 30 30 the uh, movies or TV shows which are present in the data set are, uh, are referring as a Netflix original and the remaining one, the 69.99 are others. After this, completing my ED analysis, I came on the hypothesis test, uh, testing. So what is my null hypothesis? That null hypothesis being tested is that movies rated for kids and older kids on the Netflix has a duration of equal to or more than two hours. The alternate hypothesis is the, that the uh, hypothesis being tested is that movies rated for kids and other older kids on the Netflix have a duration of less than two hours. So this is the movie. I copied the, my data frame in the hypothesis and this is my hypothesis data frame head. Here you can see the ratings. Actually, my Google Colab notebook, I don't know why it is working slowly, very slow. But you can see the coding which I did. And based on the results, the null hypothesis was rejected because uh, only T value falling outside the specified range. So it can be concluded that the movies targeted for kids and older kids on Netflix have a duration is less than two hours. Uh, and the second hypothesis testing, the, the alternate hypothesis was the hypothesis being tested is that movies on Netflix have a duration of more than 90 minutes. And the null hypothesis was the hypothesis being tested is that uh, there are no movies on Netflix with the duration of more than 90 minutes. Again, this is my head of my hypothesis data frame. And after doing performing this hypothesis testing, I got the result that see here, movie duration is 99. For more details, you can refer to this code. This code is available in GitHub, in my GitHub profile. So here you can see the scores are for the uh, T value, it is one point minus 1.9 and the score is 1.96 uh, T distribution. So because the T value falls outside the specified range, the null hypothesis is again being rejected. This indicates the movie rated for the kids and older kids on Netflix do not have a duration of more than 90 minutes. Then I did some feature engineering. This is, these are the types of my columns. Then I remove the stop words and punctuations from my data set. My data set is containing a column named description. So I did this thing on the description column. Like these are the description of that, those movies or TV shows. So I remove the punctuations. I remove the stop words. Sorry for the waiting.
So getting the shape of my TFIDF data frame, I got the answer that triple seven zero and five thousand is this is the shape. Means uh triple seven zero rows and five thousand columns. Next uh, I converted my X into array form for clustering. So first clustering algorithm which I implemented on this one on my data set was K mean. So I found it that num uh, I used elbow method to found the value of k, that how much clusters must be formed on my data set. And using elbow method, I got the answer, and using one more method, still hot score, I got the answer that 26 uh, clusters I can form in my data set. Here you can see. So based on elbow method and silhouette score analysis, it is suggested to form the 26 cluster for the given data set. Elbow method helps to determine the optimal number of clusters by evaluating the distortion or inertia. Uh, while silhouette score measures the quality and the separation of uh, the clusters. Now this, is, uh, now this is the training for k-means model on a data set. So uh, while evaluating this uh, data set, I want uh, that Silot score is 0 0.007 and the Davies Baldwin score is 0, uh, 9.1937. Next, these are the value counts, new data point counts in the cluster. Here you can see the third cluster has 2504 number of data points. Here you can see the third cluster has the maximum number of data points. So it has been observed that the cluster three contains the highest number of data points compared to the other cluster. This indicates that the significant portion of the data set belongs to cluster three, suggesting that there are certain characteristic odd patterns shared among these data points and that differentiate uh, them from the rest of clusters. So this is so this is the scatter plot for clusters. Then I plotted the dendrogram. For the clusters, all 26 clusters here you can see. So the next method is agglomerative clustering. So, so this was my data frame. I applied agglomerative clustering on my data frame and I evaluate that what the result I got. Let me show you. So this was the score. So lot coefficient was minus 0 0.002 and the Davis Bolden score was 13.97. Now I plotted this C uh, scatter plot from, uh, for my clusters. Here you can see. Now the next plot is, this is the last plot, data points with the different clusters. Blue refers to zero, orange refers to one, green refers to two, Red refers to three, and the pur purple refers to four. Now heading on to the conclusions. So what conclusion I got from these data set? So based on the evaluation of L1 Silot score, the optimal number of clusters is determined to be 26. K means clustering is found to be more suitable for the identification than the hierarchical clustering, as indicated by evaluation matrix. The year 2017-2018 witnessed the highest number of movies released in the Netflix. Documentaries uh, emerged as the most uh, prevalent genre on the Netflix. His TV shows uh, the dominate uh, dominate as top genre among the TV shows on Netflix. Majority of movies on the Netflix have the duration ranging between 50 to 150. The United States has the highest number of content on the Netflix. India boosts uh, the highest number of uh, movies available on the Netflix. So out of the movies on Netflix, approximately 30 were released directly on the platform and by remaining 70 were previously released through other distribution channels uh, before being added to the Netflix. So this was my project and thank you so much for listening to me patiently. And I hope you like my work. Thank you so much.